Welcome to the Healthcare Business Secret Show, where we interview industry leaders and break down exactly how they're dominating their markets so you can learn from the best and can double your revenue, double your impact, and double your time off. In this episode, we're talking with Judy Cho. Judy is an author, speaker, and nutritional therapist. She's a nutritional therapy practitioner with a psychology and communications degree from the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, and she also has a functional nutrition and holistic health private practice and helps her patients with health issues working on finding the true root cause of the problem. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I really want to get you on the show because you're doing some really interesting things in the nutritional space uh, as well as the business space. So give our audience some context onto who you are, what you do and, and, and what you're about. Sure. So hi, everyone. I'm Judy Cho. And for those of you that don't know me, I go by Nutrition with Judy. I am on um, multiple social media platforms. So YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and I just share nutritional content. Um, I kind of follow a meat-based diet. And so, you know, I find a lot of healing in this space and for a lot of people, there's not a lot of information out there. And so I'm just providing nutritional therapy, bits of information in these bite-sized portions and, you know, just making nutrition easy for people to consume. And I know there's a lot of puns in there, I guess they're all intended. Um, and, you know, the thing is, I came from a business background. So I was a business management consultant for uh, like 12 years. And, you know, I worked with these big corporations, and we were trying to find the ways to um, have more efficient processes. So I managed these multi-million dollar projects. And, my health started declining. And so as I got rolling into the whole science and nutrition and understanding how food can either be a slow poison or it can actually be medicine for the body, I realized that, you know, I think my calling is actually in nutrition and not in, you know, business consulting. But, you know, learning from what I learned in management consultant, I can now like streamline the process to provide education that's um, understandable for the general audience. And so, you know, I married that and my psychology degree, and that's how I've been able to be successful as a speaker, um, to grow my social media relatively quickly, and to, you know, build my own Nutrition with Judy community. And now I'm about to release my uh, first ever Carnivore Cure um, published book. That's amazing. That's amazing. So did this book come out of like a, uh, I wanted to create a manual where I can just kind of give it to people to have access to all of my thoughts and feelings about a topic or was it always like a planned business thing? Yeah. So it's interesting. Um, you know, I've always loved writing. So I think my strongest suit in terms of communication, although I can speak, I think I am best at um, articulating and writing. And so I've always wanted to write a book. I never thought it'd be a nutrition book, but over the years of being on social media, I noticed I get the same questions over and over, right? So when you're meat-based, so obviously you'll have a little less vitamin C or you'll have a little less fiber. And I noticed, why am I getting the same questions over and over? And it's a little bit redundant for me, but it's also, since I'm getting these same FAQs, maybe it'll be more efficient and more effective for me um, also to just share my ideology in a book, right? So it's a kind of like a double win. So for a client or a prospective client, it's somebody that can read the book and say, wow, like this makes a lot of sense. I want to learn more. And now I know I can go to nutrition with Judy, but also it saves my time, right? So now I have this one book that people can use over and over. And it's almost like a marketing tool. I mean, that's not the reason I made it, but it's really this guide to help people that want to possibly do a meat-based elimination diet and use it to really solidify their stance and why they're trying this diet. Yeah, I love that. And it's a great um, way of uh, establishing authority as well, right? Having a book, yes. I've got a book as well. It's, a, it's just a great plug to say, hey, I kind of know what I'm talking about, but it also allows people to, to get into your world a bit more and, and consume it as a, as a, a watcher from the outside. I think that things like podcasts and social media are great um, social media, especially for being behind the scenes uh, a little bit like Instagram and things like that. People want to yes. see what you're up to, um, podcasts being great for having that conversation, but a book kind of really brings it together as, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting because as the book is about to release in about a month and, you know, the pre-sales have been doing well and I'm really grateful for the supportive community, but I feel a little vulnerable, even though I've been in the social media space, YouTube and all that, but it's like, 
you know, there's this one body of work that kind of shows your ideology, your brand, who you are, which can be such a benefit, but it's also can bring in criticism, right? So it's like this nervousness going into it, but I know that the book can help a lot. And I've put in so much effort um, to really help people. And I think that really truly can speak to my brand um, from a business perspective. Mm. I think that unless you are doing things that are polarizing, then you're doing nothing. Like there's, there's no advantage in being vanilla. It's like pricing. People always say to me, oh, I want to reduce my prices. So I got a competitive edge. I say, well, are you the cheapest in your area? And people know about you as being the cheapest and therefore they're going to want to see you. And they say, well, no, I say, so therefore you're just losing money. <laughs> like, there's Yeah. No you know, what's there. funny is when I was first starting, uh, we were trying to figure out pricing and, you know, we thought about the Groupon model where it's like, maybe I give like a free discount. And the thing is like, exactly. You said, um, dependent on where you want to brand yourself, like that's how people will perceive you, right? There is a kind of brand perspective based on the way you price. If you give out too many deals, then people will start thinking, oh, you're like a discounted, you know, service place. And then will then people ever want to come to you and use you at your full price, right? Or if you increase prices over the years. And so for me, like I didn't want to be that oh, at a certain hour, I'm going to be very competitive or one of the cheapest because that just makes me have to work that much harder, work for that many more clients when I can have less clients charge at a higher rate, but give that much more targeted service. Exactly. Um, I think that while we're on the topic of, of pricing, when you are charging a premium and you're packaging your services around a premium, it allows you to have a higher margin, which means that you can reinvest and create a better service and get ahead of the competition. Yes. There's a reason why Apple is is one of the largest companies uh, in the world. No, I totally agree. With their premium, which allows them with their margin to make things better and market more and, and stay ahead of the game. Whereas uh, unless you're at a high volume, like Walmart type thing on, on cheaper, right? Unless you're at massive amounts of volume to get your revenue, it doesn't work. And especially in service-based healthcare, it just doesn't work. You have to have a higher margin. So premium is key. But I think um, back to our point about, you know, being vanilla or, or polarizing, um, you're going to get criticism. Um, oh, yeah. because you're saying things that are going to piss some people off because by doing that, you are saying things that are going to excite other people. But most of us are conditioned to avoid pain. And so we worry about the criticism more than we worry about the, the benefit of, of the praise, right? So it's like, I'm oh, going yeah. to do something and, and it's going to be huge. Oh, I wonder if someone's going to judge me versus, oh, I wonder how many people are going to love me or going to love the thing that I'm saying. And I think that it takes you know, some, some metaphorical uh, balls to just say, you know what, I want to get my message out. I want to share some stuff because I think it's valuable. And so for people who are facing that, like, what are you doing to help combat that imposter syndrome? Because it, it comes up, it doesn't matter how big you are. We all have an, an element of imposter syndrome. Oh so yeah. You, um, you know, that's such a great question because I get that sometimes, you know, the fact that I wasn't a doctor or I don't have an MD behind my name or that I'm, I don't have a PhD. It's like, how do you know that you know enough, right? And that's where kind of I did the extra leg of work and made that book because now, you know, here's all the citations to my work and my thought process. So there's one, but, um, you know, I, I even get it a lot with my clients. So they're like, how do I know that this is the right way? And it's just, they focus on the one negative versus like the 20 praises they get, right? And I really believe that if we don't, follow and just consider other opinions, we get into these kind of silos and we just don't learn something else. And it can become like this silo um, danger. And it's just, if you just follow people, for example, that kind of believe in your belief system, then how do you know that you're not wrong or you're not challenging yourself to grow? And so for me, I've just learned that, you know, I get hate from vegans. I get hate from vegetarians. I get hate from carnivores that are not doing it my way. Um, I get questions of like, where's your credentials, right? And uh, a certification in nutritional therapy is not enough. And, you know, at first, of course I'm human, it bothers me, but I know the healing powers I've had personally. I've now worked with over a hundred clients and I've seen their healing. And I know that, you know, these case studies are so important. And so, regardless of the one negative, sure, it may affect me maybe a few minutes, but overall, I try not to stay on social media too long. I try not to focus on the negative because look, like people, there's that one saying that say you can grow and be the biggest 
building by knocking down all the other buildings, or you can just focus on your own growth and your own building and be the tallest by doing what you need to do. And so mm-hmm. that's what I recommend for myself. I recommend that to my clients, but I also listen to um, other podcasters that are, you know, motivated in the right ways. They have the good heart and they're about service and they're about doing the right things and not focusing on putting down other people. Yeah. I think regardless of, of what you're doing, what your message is, is I think that uh, what's important is focusing on the clients that you're helping and who you're working with, right? We all have different theories on things and then we're always going to get hate from different angles because everyone wants to believe their thing is right. And so they want to tear down others. And so irrespective of what you're doing, it's it's looking back to why am I doing this? Am I in, in integrity with and authenticity with who I'm trying to help? Am I getting people results? Yes. And what's important? Having the entire alphabet after my name to try and prove something to people who who are trying to do the same thing. And I, there are a lot of broke experts. Professors are an example of that. A lot of people study a lot and want to teach a lot and are not helping lots of people, not making lots of money and have no freedom themselves. And now that's not to crap on professors, but that's just to say that inherently by, you know, going after our qualifications to prove something, to give you enough permission to then go off and actually make a difference is not the way to do it. More power to you if you want to learn the stuff and be the expert. That's amazing. We need people like that, but it's not the way to have financial success, it's not the way to influence the most number of people because there are too many people who know lots of stuff who no one knows that they exist. You know what I mean? And I think that it's obvious with people like Oprah and Tony Robbins and, um, you know, Dr. Oz and all the fancy doctors on TV, right? Like they're the authority that someone listens to. Are they the best at what they do? No. Are they good at what they do? Yes. Do they get results? Yeah. Yes. And that's all that matters. And right. imposter syndrome comes up because we, we are, we, we get to a point where so many people are focusing on us that we start to question whether or not it's valid because we're so worried about it not being right. Whereas we need to go back to basics and be like, well, who's this for? It's not for the vegans in your case. It's for the people who are struggling and they want a different way of looking at things. And if my influence, you know, the influence I'm trying to get out there is to help someone to have a different way of looking at things and to get healthy choices. And I've got a method that I've got results for, then they're adults. They can choose to do that or not. Yes, exactly. That's exactly it. It's really just trying to inform and, you know, shedding light in areas that they may not have considered. Right. So for example, like everyone thinks fiber is so essential for health. Well, I can give some of the science, some of the studies that show otherwise. And, you know, maybe some people do okay with, um, with fiber, but there are ways to get like short chain fatty acids from like butter, which is butyrate. But, um, you know, it's really to educate. Now, if you want to kind of adhere to it, it's up to you. But the human, the natural human state want believe it's the whole cognitive dissonance. Like I, if you don't, if you are saying things that are different from what I believe my core value believes, then I will, you know, automatically argue that because that's how I can inherently keep my value system. Right. So if I'm vegan and I just listen to the things nutrition with Judy says, and it makes sense, then my core of my value system will get disrupted. And so my automatic reaction is, oh my gosh, that's crap. What's her background? What is her degree? You know, that type of stuff. So that's a lot of times it's more about the other person or the listener, the person that's on the attack more than you. And so people that feel the imposter syndrome, you know, in your heart, as long as it's pure, it's real and why you're sharing your message is true, then you shouldn't worry about those naysayers because there will always be naysayers. And you just need to, you don't know those people's situations and you just need to share what you can and just say it. In, and I think for me, the biggest, biggest, um, I think success marker has been hard work and it's been off, um, being just authentic, being your true self and not just selling out to someone or parroting something just because, you think that's going to sell people question and and give crap to tony robbins you know they say that what he does doesn't work they say that they they have all these opinions about it and they they make you look it up online people make these analysis videos and breaking stuff down and it's like tony robbins helps millions of people and has Mm -hmm. done over his four decade career or whatever it is um does he have all the qualifications? No. Is he, you know, the, you know, et cetera, what, what, are, what are his qualifications, et cetera? His qualifications are based off of working with actual people that get actual right. results. And often science is far behind uh, uh, reality, so to speak, simply because for you to study it means you have to 
track it. So it has to be happening. And if it's not happening because we're not allowing it to happen because we're so worried about the science, then we kept this catch 22 where we can't actually study it because we're not letting it happen. And I think that this is the difference between, uh, you know, when you're anecdotally working with clients and getting them an outcome and, and you have this new method, for example, off-label uh, for drugs, right? Doctors will mm -hmm. regularly give random other drugs that they've noticed an off-label uh, result for, but it's not sure, being studied. Sure. It's not backed up with science, but that's the art of medicine, so to speak. And I think that as health professionals, we need to understand that our message is about what come what comes from what we're doing with our actual clients. And no matter what, no matter which channel you're in, whether you're doing something like what you're doing, where people are questioning this thing, or you're doing something that's super mainstream, or it doesn't matter. There's always going to be someone who is upset by what you're saying. And if you if you're focusing on that. Um, it's the wrong way to do it. I have it with clients and I say to them, look, you're spending an hour with someone. Why don't you do 45 minutes? You're going to get them a better outcome and you're going to increase your capacity by 25%. And they say, oh no, James, I can't do that because you know, people, they, they value the time and I want to give this amazing service. And I'm like, yeah, well, I spend 15 minutes with people and my clients get better results and I track everything than what you're doing. Um, and my clients love me. Are you saying that I'm deserving my clients by not yeah. spending an hour? Or maybe it's not the time that matters. Maybe it's the value you give. And but we're, we're, we're so worried about what others are going to think, not about at the core of who we are and what we're doing and the authenticity we have around it. And that's why I'm kind of harping on this point. I love it because you're, you're just doing it anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, recently I shared some confront, um, <laughs> confrontational conversations and, you know, I thought it's a dialogue that should be brought up. And so I brought it up and I knew full well that there would be some people that wouldn't be happy. Again, it's the whole cognitive dissonance thing. But I knew that some people, it's like planting a seed, right? It's from there, they can learn and they can look back eventually and maybe say, hey, Nutrition with Judy was the person that brought this to my attention. And now I appreciate that. And I realized that I can trust her. And um, maybe in the future, if I have some health thing, I'll, I can work with her, right? So I just don't think that we should always be safe. There's just so much information out there now that here's the vanilla track you can follow and be successful. Here's the sales funnels and all that. But look, you can follow all of that. You can have a ton of followers on social media, but that doesn't mean you're successful. Um, what I've learned is that one is you get bigger. So the more followers you have, you are going to get attacked more often because people just seem to think that if you have more followers, then you're just not human. And so if they attack you, it's okay. I, so I, I can totally believe why Tony Robbins gets a lot of attacks. Um, he's is a very super um, motivational speaker. He's wildly successful, but there's going to be hate and there's going to be a person that didn't feel like his package was enough. Um, and, you know, when you do these kind of spoofs against them, they also can get views that way. You just don't know those people's intent. And it's, it's just not worth a person's while to focus on those naysayers. And then, yeah, I think it's just, you know, just being your genuine self and, you know, figuring out what problem you're trying to solve for your clients. Like that's the huge thing is getting to what am I trying to solve? And for me, it's holistic health. It's getting my clients and getting them, my community back to optimal health. So I'll have conversations where it's a little uncomfortable, right? Are we going to vaccinate? Are we not, for example? But that's part of optimal health, right? Um, should we be around like 5G and all that stuff? Like that's part of it. Sleep, fasting, that's all part of it. And so I talk about all those things because I believe all of that is part of holistic health. So I think for your audience, um, you know, if they want to be successful, they need to figure out their why, obviously. But then from there, um, once they get over kind of that imposter syndrome, then it's really about what service are you trying to provide? What problem are you trying to sol solve for your clients so that you can provide something that people are willing to pay for? Yeah, the, the, the very first thing I do with my, uh, my new clients on my health business accelerator program is work with them on establishing just that. Mm -hmm. Who is it that you work with? What result are you promising? What's your irresistible offer that just makes absolute sense for this person? And are you speaking the right language? Because if you've got a person, for example, and they're coming in, they say to you, I've got back pain. Um, is that only what they want help with? They say to you, well, I've got back pain, so I want to get it taken care of. And they're coming to you and you're a body worker and you're charging 120 bucks, right? Is that the best thing for them, for pain relief, for them to pay you 120 bucks for an hour session? Or should they go to the supermarket and buy some drugs? 
if they really want pain relief, right? So it's not just about the pain relief because if it was, that's what they'll do. And I've often right. said that to clients and they'll say, well, I don't want to do that because drugs are bad or I don't want to do that because, you know, that's not going to fix it. And you go, okay, so you're wanting to fix the issue, not just give yourself temporary pain relief for five minutes. And they go, well, of course. And I go, okay, great. And the reason that I do that is because people sometimes are not even aware of what they actually yes. want. They just kind of no, telling exactly. you some stuff, but in the back of their head, it's something else. And so unless you know that about your client, you can't create an irresistible offer that just is a no brainer for them to want to work with you because you're not speaking the right language. And so you're saying, yeah. come and see me. I'm going to help your pain. And the person goes, okay, like intellectually, you know, I kind of want that thing, but emotionally it's not what I want. Where someone else comes along and said, I'm going to help you to be able to play with your kids. I'm being arbitrary. And the person goes, oh, that's amazing. I want to go there. And you look at your competitors and you go, why is that person doing so well? And, and I'm the same as them. And I'm, I've got more qualifications and it comes back to that thing, right? I've got more qualifications than them. I'm more trained than them. I have, I know all these techniques. Why am I not busy? It's usually because you're not speaking the right language because you're not connecting with the person and understanding how to position it as an irresistible offer. So hundred percent, that's like number one thing that, that I think a lot of people miss is we start with, I have this knowledge and I just want to help some people, but we're not looking at who are we working with. So Let's let's get a bit more tactical with your with your book. Have you got? Are you selling it online uh, as well? Are you doing free plus shipping? Are you going to be putting it in bookstores? What's your um, what's your promo plan with it? And um, and what kind of add ons do you have in the background with that? Sure. So you know, I have been approached actually with my book to break it up into two books because it's kind of thick. Um, and from by a publisher, but I just wanted to keep it in house. Like this is my baby. I've worked a year over it. And I think I want the rights where if I wanted to make a second edition, cause I needed to correct it. Um, I wanted it to be my own. And so I didn't give it up. And so I'm self-publishing. Uh, we are right now we're doing pre-sale. So there's like bonuses to entice people to, um, buy during pre-sale. So there was like a kind of special bonus where the first hundred people were to get certain things and that has passed now. And it shows on the website that it's sold out. Um, but there's all these other bonuses that if you were to buy within the pre-sale time period, you get all these like freebies. I call it the, the carnivore cure swab, um, swag pack, um, bonus swag pack. And so you get all of that when you um, sign up before December 2nd. And what else? Um, so we have it on Amazon. So that's the pre-sale for the eBooks there. And then the uh, paperback book is offered on our own website. But once it goes live, it'll be on Amazon. We're thinking about having it on Barnes and Noble. It's all really similar. There's a lot of um, behind the scenes work to get all of this stuff done. But you know, it's really just a lot of marketing. So I thought writing the book was majority of the work, but I think writing the manuscript is maybe 20% of the work and marketing is so important. Um, mm. You know, you need to get the content. It's like, if I want to share my message, it's not just about how many books I want to sell. It's really about if I want to get this message out, cause I believe in it. And I believe that people can heal with the secrets in the book kind of thing, then I need to market it. So the more and more people can hear about it. Right. So it's about working with other people, um, networking with like people in the social media space, people that are in the meat health space, um, that are in paleo keto, that type of thing and having them, Hey, like, do you mind sharing my book? If you feel that it adds value and then do you mind sharing it with your audience? So there's that type of networking, um, you know, like up to this point, I've worked really hard to build my email newsletter. I gave out a lot of freebies. So I have a beginner's guide to carnivore. I have like a kid's density guide. So I've been giving up all these things and I've collected emails in that process. And now I can share with my community that have seen value in the product, um, the content I've shared. And so now I can say, Hey guys, like here, I have a book that can even help you deeper if you're willing to pay a little bit, um, from it. And so, I mean, it's just a ton of marketing and there's other things that I'm doing, but I mean, those are some, and it's really, it's really about planning ahead of time of how mm. you are going to, you know, do the tactics to make your product successful. It, it doesn't matter what it is doing yeah. the thing is the smallest part of the the job. Yes. The rest of it is marketing. Like, and it comes back to the, it's funny how it, it recircles, right? You can make it a fancy book and be the expert and no one buys it because yes. you're not an authority and no, no one knows you exist because you're not marketing it properly and you can have the best service in the world. 
and no one's going to know if you don't market it properly. And you can't rely on referrals. You can't rely on word of mouth and hopefully someone will find you because maybe your book might help some people in 20 years eventually. You know what I mean? Like, but you, you have to go out there and actually promote it. People need, to, like if you've got a service, people need to be experiencing that service. If you've got a product, people need to be purchasing and using that product. If you've got a book, people need to be reading it. And the only way to get that to happen is to get people to see it and to get people to see it as what your marketing strategy is about. Um, I'm a big uh, proponent of, of joint ventures. I think that's an amazing way of doing it. And then and we run a lot of ads uh, to our book. And so we, um, uh, we're focused more on getting it out and using it as a lead generation tool. So people get yeah. a copy of my book, they learn some things, they purchase many programs and they book calls and they join our big program. Um, are you looking at trying to push uh, yours to bestseller lists and things like that? Um, you know, we've already made the best, um, I think it's new arrivals on Amazon. So it's made it already in two categories. So I'm really grateful for that. And yeah, in a perfect world, um, I don't think as a self-publisher, you can get on New York Times. And I mean, that's not really my goal. It's to get this book out there to as many people as possible. Um, and so, yeah, if we get on Amazon bestseller list, that, that'd be awesome. Um, and I, I believe it has the potential, right? Like I've just worked so hard on it. And, you know, I've shared little snippets. And like you said, I've done so much marketing. Um, you know, one thing I'd recommend for your viewers is that um, there was this like podcast I listened to a while ago that said, you know, um, a lot of people will share information and they don't talk about their own practice and their own business. And so people don't even know that you offer services, right? So you need to be clear about your messaging and what you offer, what your services are. So again, it goes back to planning, Um you need to be able to like, even to follow a diet and be successful. You can't just go, okay, tomorrow I'm going to start a keto diet. You don't even know what it is. Then you have to go to the market. You might run out of time. There might've been a stress and you're like, forget it. I'll just do it tomorrow. But if you plan and you know, okay, tomorrow I'm going to eat this. I'm going to remove all the products in my house that aren't keto, that type of thing. So same thing with business. If you know that you want to, once you have your kind of business that you're trying to sell or your service, then how are you going to market that so that someone can easily understand it and then be able to buy into it, right? Like what service do you provide me? And then from there, like, how, how are you selling it to me? Like what's, what's going to entice me? Like, how are you going to market your service? And mm -hmm. all of that requires planning in advance. And then I think from there, it's just putting in the effort on social media or wherever you're sharing to show the validity of your like service or brand. Mm. most people just do a bunch of stuff and then hope you get to an outcome and, and oh, it yeah. starts with actually knowing what your outcome is like what do i want to achieve because if you said i want to be new york times best-selling author of wall street journal uh, a friend of mine's got to wall street journal and i'm pretty sure he's self-published and oh, it's because okay. it was like i have a plan so what am i going to do to get it there um and then they went about various tactics and so uh you know a, a point i want to make is for everyone listening you don't have to have a book and mm -hmm. it's going to sound kind of weird and esoteric but like what is a book it's just literally a collection of pages of some stuff yeah. that's valuable to a person and then we call it a book and then we try and sell it and you print it or whatever my first book was a an ebook i've sold thousands of copies uh, made a lot of money off the back of that and it was essentially an ebook which is just a giant pdf with a yeah. nice cover and some pages in it that okay gave but it still required effort from you so don't no, you no, shouldn't downplay that yeah. no no the point i'm trying to the point i'm trying to make is that it wasn't fancy but it served the purpose. And yes. I didn't think to myself, oh, it's not a book, so I can't charge for it. It's not valuable. I said to myself, I want to solve problems and give people valuable information. And so I'm just going to write this thing out and save it in Google Docs and save it, download it as a PDF, and then say, here is my ebook, right? Everyone thinks, oh, no, I'm going to have to talk to a publisher. I'm going to have to spend a long time writing these things. And they, they overcomplicate it. When in, in fact, there are a lot of, there's a lot of knowledge and experience that you have that you can sell not for the intent to make money because a lot of the time books and things like that inherently don't make money unless yes. they're large. It's about getting customers. Once you have a customer, someone who's given you money, it's a lot easier to get them to give you more money, right? So it's that first transaction and a book, an ebook, a small course, a download, um, you know, call it whatever you want. I could call, could have called mine a PDF. I decided to call it an ebook, same thing. Um, it's like, here you go, become a customer of mine. Let's interact further and further and further. And so if you listen to this and think, I'd love the idea of writing a book. Well, all you need to do is go out and, and create a structure, know what your outcome is, create a structure, fill it in, save it as a PDF. And that can be your very first one that you've done because I've done that and sold thousands of copies, right? Yeah. You, can um, level you, up, know, you know, 
I will say that, so my carnivore guide has downloaded a lot, but, um, I also have a bone, like a gut healing, like bone broth guide. And it's even shorter than the carnivore guide. And I actually charge for it a very small amount, but I, I, there is what I found with these people that sign up for both is that there is a little bit more value when a dollar is placed and they don't know this psychologically, but I notice it in terms of the responses. So people respond more with the bone broth guide and they ask questions because I think when there's a dollar amount spent on a product or service, there is more kind of invested interest where they then will try to, you know, either work with you or they'll find more value in what you're offering. There's so much free content out there. So if you're only giving out free content and you don't value yourself in terms of like a dollar amount, then people may not take you as seriously. Like, mm -hmm. oh, well, her ebook is like X amount of dollars versus someone else's. And maybe it's just not that good, right? Like people price mm -hmm money accordingly. And so sometimes it's worth it, like you said, to um, get your ideas, take some time, get your ideas and sell it for a small amount. And, you know, that's, it can also be a lead generator, as you said. hundred percent, hundred percent. What, um, where can our audience connect with you online and where can they get a copy of your book? Sure. So the book is called Carnivore Cure, C-U-R-E, and it's there on carnivorecure.com, or you can find it on Amazon if you go after December 2nd, both of them, both the ebook as well as the paperback will be sold there. Um, it's in color. It's like 450 pages, but um, there's just so much information in there that I really think anybody that has any disease that wants to try an elimination diet, it's a great tool. Um, so you can find that there, you can find it on Amazon. Um, I'm also, you can find me on link, um, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube under Nutrition with Judy. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I really yeah, appreciate you. Thanks for you. having me. Take care. Thank you for listening to the show. If you like the episode, please hit subscribe and leave us a review. I'd really appreciate it as it helps us get our episodes out to more people just like you who want to know how to increase their revenue, impact more people, and build businesses that work for the lifestyle they want. Now, I know your time is valuable, and I know that you are here to learn the secrets to success in your health business, so I have something special for you just for checking out the episode. Now, if you're a health professional, coach, or trainer in business, and you're serious about growing a profitable, impactful business, then pay attention, because as a listener of the show, I want you to win. And so I've created a host of resources available exclusively for listeners of the show. So if you're tired of trying to figure out this game of business, marketing, and sales all on your own, and you're ready to just implement what's already proven to work rather than reinventing the wheel, I want you right now to go and check out healthcarebusinesssecrets.com forward slash insider. And there you'll find over $5,000 worth of trainings, resources, and coaching available only for listeners of the show. There I'll give you the resources on everything from how to acquire 10 times more of your ideal clients using social media and paid ads, even referrals, how to increase your client conversion into packages at an 80 to 90% conversion rate like me, how to retain your clients for longer, getting them better results and making them happier, how to increase your prices and charge a premium to work with you and how you can build a six, multi-six, even seven-figure practice just like I did, but with a tenth of the time and a tenth of the effort. What I want you to realize is that everything I teach comes from exactly what I did to have success and still have success in my own health business, and I want to share that with you so you can have success too. So go check out healthcarebusinesssecrets.com forward slash insider right now and let me help you win big in your health business. Also remember to subscribe for two episodes every week full of the secrets to have success in your health business as well as leave us a review so we know what you thought of the show. And I'll see you on the next episode.